Welcome to the Marvel Sports Worldwide Podcast, where we discuss and analyze your favorite Marvel sports. From JMR Marble League to all go-do tournaments, we'll make sure you never miss the action. All Marble Sports, all the time, right here on the MSW Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome, after three weeks of silence, back to the Marble Sports Worldwide podcast. My name is Brendan. And I'm Commander Wolf. I got nothing, I can't think of anything funny to try and copy you had to be you like that. You had to be like, after three weeks of silence, I'm Commander Wolf. Oh, I couldn't hear the silence, like, whenever you did that the first time, like, the silence didn't come through. Like, sometimes for a reason when you're talking behind you. The audio doesn't come through. Maybe because I'm talking not even facing my mic like you're not supposed to. Probably. But, uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's what you should have done. Anyway, guys, we are back. It's been a while. I've had a I've had a tough last few weeks. I was away for two weeks. Um, two weeks ago, I went with my family. We watched the spring training game, uh, Met game down in like Port St. Lucie in Florida. And then last week, I went back up to Boston. Yeah. Boston. To, um, to see some of my friends from... Uh, college and and, and whatnot um, actually that's funny alex live chat uh he he quoted you waf you said the silence didn't come through write that down that'd be funny for this episode we'll vaguely remember Wait, what that means the silence didn't come through yeah I'm quoting live chat now You're quoting live chat who's quoting you of saying something stupid <laughs> um but it, it's funny okay uh but yeah so I, I went back up to boston that was fun saw some friends but, like, you know, it's been hard to fit the episode in around that. And also, I've had a stressful uh, couple last few weeks, you know, um, stuff going on with a lady. Um, so, that's been stressful because, you know, relationships are hard and stressful. So, um, they're, it's a lot better now, which is why I'm sitting here on a Sunday talking about marbles. My mindset is a lot better and things are, I think, going better for her as well. But, uh, uh, it was... Uh, it was a worrisome time for a little bit there. Um, also, random side note, over the last few weeks, this has nothing to do with anything I just said, just what I'm going to say now. Um, I've I've listened to every single, I guess over the last couple months, like when I'm just at work and listening to music and just doing, doing work, I listened to every single Mario Kart soundtrack. And I ranked every song worst to best from every Mario Kart soundtrack. So I have this giant list, almost 400 songs strong, of Jeez. Mario Kart ranking songs worst to best. And I think my ranking is pretty fire. I don't know how many of you guys are really big Mario Kart people. But the, first of all, the soundtrack from Mario Kart across the board, even the older songs are very good. But Mario Kart 8 is just amazing. So I just wanted to do that ranking. It was a lot of fun. And I, I'm really happy with my ranking. If you are really interested in the ranking, I will send it to you. You just email me, mswpodcast at gmail.com there. Um, you can email me, ask for the ranking. You can also email and talk about marbles and everything else to do with what's happening now in marble sports. Because we're going to be back weekly here. We want to hear from you. We want to hear about um, Marbula One. And, of course, we got Marble League coming up this summer. So we better start to prepare mentally and physically for that. Mm. But, yeah, email me. I, I actually do want to share that with people who are interested. Um, uh, yeah, live chat. I think I, do, I will make a video at some point with, like, top 100 or top 150 songs um, and actually just have them, like, like uh, like that one of those super like three hour videos just plays through all of them. It's, it, I'm really happy with the ranking. Um, I actually took uh, if you actually like would need a playlist of music that's just like soundtrack music to because you just want background music to get you through a various amount of work or something. Um, then I have like a playlist that has um, I call it the best of OSTs, and so far I have three OSTs. I have all the Mario Kart OSTs. I have Cuphead and I have Night in the Woods, where I ranked them and picked the the top like the top half of the rankings, so that all the good songs, all the bangers, and put them in the playlist. So, um, so it's like you listen to the playlist; it's all all the best of the songs. So, if you really want that, you can email me at the podcast email that I keep remember reminding you of. And uh, yeah, I'm always excited to share that because then I get to share my rankings and like that's it's. I found that playlist so helpful for when I'm like at work. I'm working 40 hours a week now at like for like an engineering company 
because I'm doing like a whole uh, internship till like the end of the summer. So when, with work like that, where I'm just kind of, it's not necessarily mindless, but it's just like a lot of work just sitting there all day doing work. It's kind of nice to have like a, a really good playlist of music that like is not just like a short playlist and it's like songs that are not super distracting because they're more like soundtrack background music. So um, mm-hmm. that's that's the interesting thing I have for you today. But um, uh, again, live chat, I have not been recording podcast episodes. I just said this a second ago um, so you can listen back. But basically, I was away for a, away for a couple weeks. I had a lot of stress going yeah. on as well. Um, I've also been yeah. making weekly the, the community posts every week to let people know when episodes aren't happening and for what reason. So if you're wondering why there hasn't been an episode, it's probably explained in our community tab. Yeah. Join the Discord also if you want to hear more updates. We do that That's there. That's too. The community tab, Discord. If you haven't really understood those yet or, or found those yet and you're listening to this podcast regularly, then that's weird because, like, just, I mean, <laughs> if you listen to this regularly, you should join the Discord. I, I could not imagine a situation where I listen to regularly to a podcast about Marvel sports, a podcast that really shouldn't even exist, um, <laughs> let's be real, and then <laughs> not go um, uh, check out uh, the Discord. So there is that. that. That is a good point. When was the last time we actually mentioned that the Discord was a thing? Because there's probably a lot of the new viewers who maybe didn't know. <laughs> I don't know. The links are there. All right, just go. You just go peruse. Um, and also it's in the community tab. There's, there's, a, there's a whole, sh- just, just do some research there. There's a lot going on in the whole world of um, MSW. Um, there's a lot of dead things in the world of MSW. There's, remember the al League? And then remember West Coast Marble oh. Cross? Which was actually fun. It was actually, West Coast Marble Cross And it did finish. Fun. Yeah. It finished. And then the guy probably just got sick of doing all that work. And honestly, I was like, whatever. Um. There's like I do I do commentary for Racing Marbles. There's a lot, there's a lot of side things that come from MSW. What do we do any other series? I don't think I don't think we ever did anything else besides those two. Uh I guess if you count like the the let's play of the the Marble League game, which like I still haven't picked that up again. Like they have the full like campaign mode with all the events in it. I still haven't picked yeah, it up. Yeah, but it's not the there's n- there, I don't think there's a real skill-based component yet. Right, like, like aside from like the, some of the mini games where like you get you do control the marble, yeah, it's not, and like, I don't know, man, like it, it's like, it may be better now. I've seen some of the shots of it, like it seems that they've improved some of like the outside graphics and stuff. It's actually like a parking lot and stuff, so it's not like it's a big old desert void. But like I and they, uh, I don't know. I need a, I at some point, I, I should have done that during the hiatus at some point, but I've also been busy as well as just having fun with other things. Yeah, I mean, and life's been hard. Like this podcast is wonderful, but I mean, like I got to be honest. Like the whole general last few months has been a mix of, uh, well, you know, starting a forty-hour job that wears me out, and then filling my weekends with seeing new friends and going to do activities, and then you know, add some stress in there where I'm spending mm-hmm. a lot of time just kind of you know in thinking. Then um, there's just a lot going on, and it's been really hard to um, to kind of make sure, uh, like, really, like, delve into the Marvel world. Like, I like the Marvel world, but it's, like, to really dive in and be a part of every aspect of it, it's just been limited time for that, but um, mm-hmm. that's okay. In the meantime, we'll uh, keep continuing to bring to the show. Yeah. Uh, before I t- talk about my life, EG asked like, if we would ever be willing to host another tournament. Um... Like like the West Coast Marble Cross thing, like yeah, something that. like that. I'm assuming. Um, yeah. I mean, if you reach out to me and you're like, "Oh, I'm gonna make all these videos," and then we just someone put them on your channel, please, then yeah, fine. Um, <laughs> I'm fine with that. Uh, if I like the creativity used in the tournament, I'll do the commentary, of course. Um, that's the that's the one caveat. If you send me a marble sports thing. I'm going to do the commentary if you're going to ask for it to be put on my channel. That's just, I mean, it just makes sense to me. Yeah, makes Um, sense. That makes sense. That's fair. Otherwise, put it on your channel. But otherwise, um, yeah, I I guess I'm open to it. If someone, but, you know, it also has to have a, wow, there was no words there. It also has to have a level of quality, right? I mean, like, it can't just be like, all right, look at me with my my iPhone recording these couple of marbles, dear. You know, it's got to have some sort of, like, clear established quality to it so you have to talk to me but um yeah well I'll recap your life dan and then we'll go to the um we'll go to the uh the episode 
Well, uh, recently, I got a job offer at Texas Instruments, so I'm going to have a full-time job out of college. Oh, shit. Dude, and that's like, that's engineering, right? That's engineering. What are you again? Engineer. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm probably switching yeah. to civil. Hmm. Because I'm in, I'm in a, a civil to... co-op right now, and it's just amazing. Like, the company's amazing. you probably heard of them. Kimley Horn? That is, oddly enough, that feels somewhat familiar. Yeah, and they're, like, huge. So... Hmm. Yeah, it's it's. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, a lot a lot of good stuff going on in that department, and I'm doing well with the job. So I'm happy for. Anyway, I'm happy for you. Like, um, what are you what are you going to be doing? Um, I'm going to be something that's called an equipment engineer. Um, basically, like I work with some of their tools and stuff that operate with their uh, their their machinery and stuff that use these for production. So like, it could entail actually working with a robot if a robot is used to actually do maintenance on their production lines wait is this the is this the calculator place they do make calculators but they're probably they primarily make semiconductors and other chips for stuff like that oh okay they're not primary calculator okay (laughs) no they are not primarily calculators okay i did not know that i thought i thought that was the thing they make calculators like they made it like for instance my dad and his team like he's he works at TI too he's been there since he got out of college as well TI eighty four semi- <laughs> he made the semiconductor that's in that's been in every single iPhone charging port since it's since I think the iPhone four do I hate iPhone more. chargers so no <laughs> well the, the, not not the charger but like the like the chip that can that connects like the actual port to the battery and stuff uh, okay okay iPhone he's also, he also, yeah. iPhone chargers have been Sorry. bothering me lately like. Yeah, I I don't like how they change them either because it makes all the old ones you had uh, incompatible. But no, it no. is what it is. Not I think they're, they're probably more efficient. I'm sure, but still. No, like I've been trying. Like I've, like my phone. I guess it's just like my phone's not even that old. It's like a year old. But like I just plug in the charger and then it just doesn't happen. Or if it just or it keeps going up back and forth between charging, uncharging, charging, uncharging, and it keeps making that beom 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 sound as it keeps going back and forth, and it drives me freaking hmm. nuts. I'm literally I might upgrade my phone just to have the wireless charger. Because yeah, I, I think can't your phone take... might just be broken, my dude. No, but it's like not that old, and it just gets all messed up. I hate, I hate it, and I hate the wires trying to plug the wires in and then hold them a certain way so it charges. It drives me. Nuts. Yeah, yeah, no, your 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 port is messed up if you have to do that. Yeah, it's it's a pain. Yeah, but like, I mean, it shouldn't break that quickly. That's all I'm saying. Um. All right, that's a, that's an almost 13 minute intro. So let's yeah. go to the news now. Um, we'll see you on the other side. <laughs> Marble Sports fans! I'm Commander Wolf here with the Marble Sports Worldwide News. It's been quite a while and there's a lot to cover, so let's jump right into it. Season 3 of Marble 1 has finally begun, and things are already off to an interesting start. The first race was at Tumult Turnpike, which was largely unchanged save for the giant banked turn. The large variety of turns still gave the racers some trouble, but the team showed much greater control compared to the last time that they were at this track. The only incident that nearly occurred was Cerulean almost coming to a stop on lap 2 near the starting gate. However, they quickly recovered and got rolling again. After several intense laps, Orangen came in first, followed by Clutter in second, and Arup in third. And now for race 2 at Sleet Street. This icy track put the marbles through the ringer with the ice chute, as it could kill all of the marbles' momentum in an instant. The two standout marbles in this race are easily Red Eye and Smoggy as they swapped positions back and forth multiple times throughout the race. But by lap 13, Smoggy managed to pull ahead and even lap 6 marbles to secure an absolutely dominant first place by 10 seconds over Red Eye in 2nd and 12 seconds over Wispy in 3rd. Season 3 is off to a chaotic start, so you don't want to miss the races to come. For our final piece of news, the Racing Marble League Season 3 tryouts have recently concluded, and there are quite a few promising new racers joining the competition. This season is sure to be an intense one, and if Crimson Lady is not careful, she might just find herself dethroned. It's shaping up to be quite the competition, so you definitely want to keep your eye out for when the first race drops. That's all the news I got for you, thanks for joining me. I'm Commander Wolf, you are the best fans in the world! Let's kick it on back with the podcast. All 
right, the news has completed. And we are back. Uh, I don't know why I did that. Um, for the rest of the show. So, we are back. News is completed. And I have an interesting comment to start off with here. So, um, Alex NGL in the live chat, by the way. You can be in the live chat. If you happen to catch our very inconsistent schedule of live recording, you can be in the live chat for the show. But Alex says, he says, Brendan, I want you to talk about how in episode three or four, three or four, by the way, we're at 125, but okay. Um, three or f- Who listens to those? <laughs> who is listening to episode three or four? Who truthfully actually is listening to, the, to those still, like right now, to remember something I said from them, to then bring it up in the live chat of episode 125? Is this distance from the night mic still coming through very well, Wap? Because I feel like it should be. All right. Um, so he says... Apparently in episode three or four, I said, you would be stupid not to pick the Oceanics for 2019 ML. Apparently I said this. I, I, um, Waff, write this down for Kason to find this because I want, I want to see if he can like play it in the episode. If he, if it doesn't play, then you know that it was just too hard to find, but like write that down. I want it. I want that to play because I actually don't remember ever saying this, but those five say it again here. Oceanics. Green Ducks, Indigo Stars, oh, it's six actually, Team Galactic, Hazers, Crazy Cat Size, those are six teams I would bet on. If I had to choose a bet, I'd choose in that environment there. And so, I don't know. I actually want to look this up. I want to actually see what, ha- I want to see where the Oceanics placed. Was this the terrible thing for them? This is the one when they finished like dead last. Oceanics finished 18th. No, that was in quali. No, that was in. Okay, I need. To, no, that's practice events. I need to see the over. This was. Was this their terrible year? Did I say that on their terrible year? Uh, I no way I did right. Oh yeah, I did. Oh my god. <laughs> if I actually said that, this was the this was the year they finished dead last by far. Oh wow. I said that. If I did, if I did, I don't remember it. I don't remember. Seventy by far. They're twenty-seven behind fifteenth place. Twenty-seven points behind the Pinkies that year. Well, I don't have to tell you there, but if I actually said that, then that's uh, this that's the old me. That's the old me. That's not that's not applicable to now, uh, because I don't know. I don't know about that. All right. Um. Waf, do you remember me saying that? Oh, you weren't even here really for that. I mean, I listened to all the old episodes too. When I like so, but I don't remember you saying that because that was what over three years ago. Yeah, that's like. Um, Alex says he's listened to all the podcasts. I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's in episode one, three, or four. He listened to all of them. That's hilarious. Um, how have you watched all one twenty four episodes? Says more live chat. Um, he's been watching since 2020. Wow. Um, well, I mean, there, there you go. Apparently I said that. Apparently I said in the year the Oceanics did worse than any other team could do. I said that, well, let's see, I quote, you would be stupid. You would be stupid to not pick the Oceanics for 2019 ML. (sighs) How far we've come. Um, Okay, Alex says you can go find it. Okay, cool. Anyway, so let's jump into to the races we have. We have two races, okay? Um, and uh, the two races are very different. We have two different kind of styles in each of the races. The first race to me was very generic overall. Like, it'll find track, find performances from Marvels, but not really super captivating. But the second race... I would say was definitely very captivating. I really enjoyed watching it. I got involved in the in the kind of the story that built between the two marbles at the front and what happened towards the end. So I mean, I don't know. I was a big fan of race two. I was a big fan of that track as well, and we'll talk about it. But uh, let's try to break things down here and start from scratch before we dive too much into that. Marbula one, mm-hmm. we know Marbula one. 
Okay, we know Marvel the One. We're in season three. We've had season one and season two. In season one, of course, the Savage Beaters won. They always have to be the first. Runners up were the Hazers. Third place, O Rangers. Kind of three teams you'd expect to be good. In season two, things kind of flipped around a little bit. We had Crazy Cat Size. Champions, of course, Savage Beaters stay in the podium. And we got Green Ducks there in third place. And now we had season three. And in season three, we've had two races so far, neither of which have been won by a crazy cat side, not to mention the terrible qualifying performance in the first um, the first race from a crazy cat side. But we also don't have many looks from the Savage Speeders or really the Green Ducks or O-Rangers, um, like nothing too established yet to kind of show that they're going to be necessarily long-term contenders. We did have a look from Savage, uh, the Crazy Cat's Eyes in race two, um, Red Eye managing second, and we did get something from the Hazers there in race two as well as they won, of course. So, But mm-hmm. otherwise, it seems very up for grabs. It doesn't seem very clear and dominant. Where like season one we watched and we were like, oh, this is Savage Speeders. Right. right. We we didn't even, we didn't even have to watch that much to be like, okay, this is going to be a thing for the Savage Speeders. Maybe Hazers will get some looks, right? I mean, season two, it, we it took less time for us to immediately be like, okay, this is going to be totally all the crazy cat size the whole time because they literally first race were never passed once. But um, things are not looking the same this year, which is good, but also very odd because you would think Marvel's just as dumb as the crazy cat size. How could all the speed and all the... The skill just kind of disappear um, come season three, but things have been not very good for them. As well as Mel Yellow, who had Mojo from the recent Mar- uh, Marble mm-hmm. League, came out and really hasn't impressed at all. So um, not really the Marble One start I was expecting. I, I have to be honest. Well, what about you? Yeah, one of the one most wow that voice crack. Geez, the most yeah. interesting thing I think I, I've seen is uh, the Turtle Sliders, like their first race with dash like they did really really well but then right after crush did really poorly so it's like it's hard to gauge where the turtle sliders are as a rookie team they are definitely the dark horse that you can't really predict at this current point in time as much as my initial reaction would be to say don't worry about the turtle sliders because who cares i think it's fair to point out that dash did have a very good race he had fastest lap for a while during that race right he did. He did well. So, um, I would. I mean, they got 16 points that race, which I believe is third or yeah, third. No, third. Uh, yes. For, for, yeah, fourth. But then fourth. he got like a fastest slap as well. So yeah. Oh, extra he did point get there. the fastest slap. Mm-hmm. No, it says 16. So no, he did not. Yeah, the, the, that that extra point. So it was like it's 15, and then the extra the the fastest lap gives you an extra point on top. Oh wait, of no, it. It yeah. supposed to be calculated. Numbers in it, italics are fastest lap, and I think numbers in bold or pole position i don't know wait let me let oh yeah me... out of curiosity did they did they fix the position of momo and minty flave on uh on the on the on the wiki because like they they act like in the comments that they mentioned like how oh yeah we accidentally confused them because with because momo got uh got second place in, in the pole position so they got, should have had two points for bonus instead of one and they forgot to so they flipped them uh, i don't know i think so because minty flave is not bolded and momo has more momo has more points now all right, and so they they fix so yeah they they managed to keep that up good. Okay. Um, all right. So um, first couple races, stats wise, O Rangers took the first race. Is it good to see that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they actually had fourth in the second. So I guess O Rangers wise, they actually do have a pretty good status so far. I think I I think I kind of said uh, misspoke when I talked about them not really having a a good start. Um, crazy cat's eyes second place. So I mean, like, but but the crazy cat's eyes aren't really where I expect them to be. I mean, they had like what did they pull seventh, sixth in the first race. Not yeah, kind of super impressive. Um, but what, what is impressive about that though is they started way down in the order. I noticed that, and I saw them, and and I will I will speak to that. I saw them towards the end of the first race. I actually didn't even realize that they were even in the field. And then all of a sudden, see if you see here, they're back up to six. But like, if you at the start of the race, they were at like sixteenth. And so I'll give them credit for jumping all those 10 places up to the top but there is something to be said for like it, it doesn't matter if you how many places you jump even if you start at the bottom it's hard to really take notice and really be and really reward that if you're if you never really do get to the podium or even the top five yellow i was not able to manage to finish top five and so that's gonna mm-hmm. he, they finished six so that's gonna like 
that's going to kind of take away from how impressive maybe that would be. I would I would be much more impressed by some a marble going thirteenth to first or thirteenth to even third than twentieth to sixth. I actually, would because I love I didn't notice this. Galactic got fifth in the race. They they continue <laughs> the trend of Galactic fifth. Well, I love it. Well, that I mean that's their thing, man. They're just that they're that skillful. They're they're skillful as a fifth place marble, and they always will be. But I mean, I think it's true because it's really easy to pass the bottom five marbles, especially if you're yellow eye. But it's not easy to pass the the, the top five. So I would argue that um, that because yellow eye couldn't really get in the top five, the the movement wasn't really super impressive. Though it was eh, it was mildly impressive. Yeah. Oh yeah, Eric Yost in the chat. Remind. Thank you for reminding me of this. Um, like the what's really kind of crazy is like how in the last lap, like Dash was going to get second place, but then they got up on that lipping a bit and let like air up and clutter pass them by so they like they they kind of choked it there at the end there but like dash still has been quite impressive for a rookie yeah i mean it's one of those things you got to wait and see right i mean like obviously this is gonna be right. time time will pass and dash has not really had a chance to do this so the fact that dash even has 16 point points come first race i mean he's gonna be drugged down by crush who has zero who was lapped so i don't know <laughs> what to tell you there um, but the 16 points is good. I mean, you're talking like you're you're talking racing better than Crazy Cat Size in first race, better than Momo in first place, better than Galactic in first race. You know, those are good. Those are pretty impressive teams to race better than up with Balls of Chaos. Mm-hmm. So good stuff. Um, second race, yeah. um, Crazy Cat Size came back a little bit, which is good to see. Minute Wist also did well. Um, definitely, uh, the O Rangers pulling a uh, fourth placer in the second race is going to be key because now they're up to they're up quite a bit of points already. Um, the O Rangers have not won a Marbula One as we saw, but they uh, they have podiumed in Marbula One. I think it was second place there in um, God, I'd have to actually look again right at the the, the stats. Uh, let's pull up here. O- yeah, the third place. Sorry, third place in the first season. So I mean, like. And the Rangers have kind of been in a rut anyway the last couple of years, so um, I think that this is just it's it was something I didn't even think about or notice until now that I'm looking at it. But I think this is going to be something that they're going to want. They're going to want to win this one because the he, the, the name of Rangers is is not been thrown around often, even on this podcast, which mm-hmm. always is very uh, uh, sure to mention the the front running teams because they just have not been. Really worth noting after the choke there in 2020. It was 2020, right, where they choked that, that, that loss. Yeah, that was 2020. Yeah, Savage Speeders yes. got their their repeat. That was really it from them. They did not perform well that Marble One season. They did not come back at all very well in the next Marble League season. So it's um, they've been dark for a couple of years, and I think that this is like them trying to come out strong, you know, and not be bothered by mm-hmm. any of the other teams in the field. Um, and on the other hand, something like Crazy Cat Size, I mean, they already kind of proved themselves. So they're not, you can tell they weren't coming out as strong. Because, like, quali- when a team, when a team doesn't qualify in high place, that's not necessarily that they're not good. That's more necessarily they're not putting enough effort in. Because, obviously, when you're, when you're, if you're a good team like the Crazy Cat Size, which is, they've proven over and over that they know what they're doing. But then mm-hmm. when there's no marbles near them on the track or they can't qualify well, they can't qualify even close to well. They did terrible in the first race. Um, I mean, that's not a good sign yeah. for the amount of effort that's being put in. So, Yeah, like, um, so I t- kind of covered this. Like, there's no official fantasy league, but I did, and I missed the chance to sign up for the fan one. But, like, I guess to try and keep track for me, if you want to see how I'm doing, uh, I did Crazy Cat Size for times three. I did Momo for times two. I really just was, I was just like shotgunning it. Like, and we'll talk about Team Momo in a little bit. Uh, Savage Speeders, then below that, uh, which is right, right now, it's, it's still early, but it's looking at that actually might have been a good choice, not putting them on a multiplier. Yeah. Uh, then you have Hazers and then Midnight Wisps. So, my, so I, I haven't calculated in a while, but like, it seems like I'm doing fairly well to start here. Though there's 10 races after this, like, they're doing 12 instead of eight, so. Lots to go. Um, I mean, oh, is, this is not the official one, though, right? They don't have an right, official Right, because they don't have an official one. Hopefully they will for Marble League. Um, but I, I will be doing fantasy for Marble League. Don't you guys worry. Um, here's the deal. At this point, I can't speak honestly to what I would have picked because I already see results. But f- for the five picks, 
I don't know if I'd see myself not picking O Rangers somewhere in there. Probably not in a multiplier, but I probably would pick would have picked O Rangers. Would I have picked speeders on a multiplier? No. I know that for sure because the speeders haven't been good lately. Um, would I have picked Crazy Cat's Eyes in a multiplier? Yes. Would I have put them on times three? I always try to avoid mainstream, so maybe times two. But it is a possibility I threw them on times. I would throw them on times three. I probably would have slept on the Hazers because I always forget about them. And I don't really know what else I would have gone with. I might have. I probably would have thrown Mellow Yellow in there in a non-multiplier, uh, going with the Mojo, the Mojo, the Hope with because they won the previous thing. I don't know how to describe that with words. The Mojo from previously winning. That's what I mean. Um, but I don't know. Momentum? Mo mo momentum, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if I would have chosen exactly what Waff chose. Waff has a pretty good choice of team, though. You have Midnight Wisps, who are top five. You have Crazy Cat Size in there. You had Hazers, right? Yep. Good, yeah, they're in top five. You have three top five teams. You have Speeders. And never sleep on the Speeders, because you, you have 12 races here. You have 12 races. You think the Savage Speeders are completely just going to be like, eh, whatever. For the, They're definitely not. So I would. Be, they could have their moment later on. They may not right. win because, honestly, they've done a lot of winning. So I feel like we have, we're going into a little dark season for the Speeders, especially since they couldn't grab that two wins in a row last year um, mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, for uh, Marble League. So that kind of probably hurt them a little bit, but the, the, we might be going to a dark season for them, but they're going to still do well. And I, and you know, we have a lot of races to go. So speeders are going to look good for you. Um, what was the fifth team? Uh, my fifth team was Momo. Yeah. I mean, Momo again, they're, I mean, that is what it is. There's your favorite team. Like, okay. <laughs> I want to point this out. Like Momo is so chaotic when it comes to Marbula one, they will put, they will position one place, fall drastically then just suddenly out of nowhere. Zoop. Like they are more chaotic than the balls of chaos in Marbula one. That's fair. I mean, Mima and, and you saw, you saw that even uh, race to race. I mean, you saw Mimo in uh, race two. There was, I mean, I think Mimo mm -hmm. was up in third for a while there and then now finished. Well, whatever eight points is, what is that like eighth? I believe it was. I believe it was uh, ninth place that they finished. They 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 managed to overtake the Savage Speeders right at the end there. Yeah, whatever you want to last lap. Call it. It's it was not. It Momo has has a lack of consistency in Marbula One. It's. <clears throat> I personally think it's because. This is why I think. I think it's because Momo is not eighth. a super fast team, by nature, but they're mm -hmm. also a very good team. So it's like they have the ability to race intelligently and race well and always put up a fight, but they also aren't the fastest team in the field. Your fastest teams right now are Crazy Cat's Eyes and Savage Speeders. Your fastest teams right now also would include the likes of the Hazers, O-Rangers. Those are your fast teams. I'd even throw I'd even throw Team Galactic in as a faster team. Balls of Chaos in as a faster team. I think Balls of Chaos is not necessarily refined as a racing team, but they're a fast team. Momo is mm. not what you think of when you think of fastest of teams, but they are very good at racing. So uh, I think that's why they, they're so chaotic, because they're able to... Lack of speed will hurt you at some point in a, in a circuit race, because you have to race right. for so long. So um, even if you're going to race very cleverly, um, it, it's going to hurt. It, it, that's why they're always up and down because they're able to make, do the right things, but they don't have that raw talent that they need to stay high up. Um, but yeah, those are kind of a little breakdown of all the teams and where we're at. Um, honestly teams, I think I'm going to look at, I mean, I'm curious for the O Rangers. I know they're in first, so there is that, but like, I'm curious for them. I'm curious to keep my eye on them. Um, I'm curious to keep my eye on the turtle sliders. I think you guys should be watching the turtle sliders. Yeah, I don't like the turtle sliders, but I also want to keep my eye on them. I want to see what they do. I think you should keep your eye on Mellow Yellow only because it's always good to keep track of the recent victor from a tournament, from an important mm -hmm. tournament. Always good because it's good to keep track because you want to see how they've responded to what they previously done. If what they previously done will have any bearing on their skill in the in their upcoming in the upcoming tournament, and it's different team to team. Um, I also think you should keep your eye on the crazy cat size, of course, and the hazers because the hazers, um, continue to show that they're ready for a victory. They are prepared to accept a victory. Not necessarily it's going to be this season, but they're very, very prepared and deserving of that. So keep your eyes on those teams. Um, keep your eyes on mm -hmm. team Momo if you're WAF. Um, yeah. 
This yeah. is probably the most disorganized we've ever done. We normally we'd like we try to do it race by race. We just combine well, both we, of them together. We no, we're gonna do the rating. We're gonna rate the races out of ten. But we also were behind, so I wanted to kind of throw a lot of things out there because there's, um, there was there's a lot there's a lot that we just haven't talked about. Like you normally, if we were consistent week to week, we would have spent the past weeks talking about the lead up. We would have had an episode where we looked at these stats from the previous two seasons and talked about the lead up to them, what we thought about them, what we thought about the teams. Mm -hmm. Then we would have, if we've done episode to episode, race to race, we would have been able to break down stats from each one. But we kind of missed out on a lot of that. Um, So I wanted to just really kind of just spitball and cover through a lot of the different teams and what's going on and just my random thoughts about them because it's it's good to just get that out there. But we can kind of return to some structure here for a moment um, as we actually have the races up and, and kind of take a look and rate them. So let's start with that. Let's just do that. Um, okay. we're, we're about halfway through an episode at this point. Uh, let's just do out of 10. Out of 10 on the track and the race itself, Tumult Turnpike we'll start with. Um, it's up here on the Chrome if you forget the track. Go ahead, Wolf. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to wait and see if I can see the backdrop painting for that track. Like, because I can't remember. Was it the same forested area as like the yeah the I gliding glaciers is. track? No. Uh, maybe. Oh, wow, that's just just bright sky. Jeez. Yeah. Um. Well, in terms of the race, um, I think it was pretty good. Again, like there was a lot of surprise contenders near the top, and so it made it very interesting. Like I never would expect it to see the the turtle sliders up there, so I was very invested in that and. You, of course, have the great recovery by the, the crazy cat's eyes near the end of the race. Like, it looked like they were really just not going to make it, but then they shot their way up. Um, and surprising, like, um, if you remember, uh, the, the uh, let it roll caused that one, that, that double 90 degree turn. There's just a flat wall, the unrelenting corner. Like, it, it's it's because it's it stops so much momentum. Mm. But I felt like it wasn't as big of an obstacle this time. This time, this round, especially compared to the next race, which we'll get to that. Um, oh, so yeah. In terms of oh, race yeah, design, we will. Yeah. In terms of race design, in terms uh, the track look, uh, again, I haven't really been able to look at the backdrop very well r- right now. But, there it uh, is. It was there oh, for a second. Yeah, it's the us. same one. So it's, it, I kind of, I, I mean, it fits the aesthetic of the, the trees they're going for. Like, the main thing about the chaos in this is just the track design. It has nothing to do with the actual aesthetic because you can't really, really make. You can technically make chaotic set pieces, but then it also is maybe a bit too loud and it distracts you from the actual race. So maybe it's a good thing they didn't go that far. Um, Fair, but, I guess. Uh, I, th- I, th- um, overall, how would I say? I would say, I'm feeling a solid seven. It's it's just a it's a really good race. Like it's a great start to a season. I would say personally. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I would give it about a five. Um, I like the two mile turn pike and the ideas that come with the the unrelenting corner to use their term the big banked hairpin. I think it has it's a very chaotic course because it changes the theme of the race style a lot. You have tough corners, but then you have this giant banked hairpin which leans more towards speed. You have a lot of sharp turns, so there's a lot of that. Mm-hmm. It's good chaos, and it's just it just has that kind of. Um, disconnected vibe to the track which is good which is good for the the chaos thing but um is this a good way to start a season not in my opinion necessarily because i think you should always start fast and simple because that sets the tone that allows fast marbles to to come out strong that allows just marbles who have been training the basics to really shine and that's kind of the best way to start. I mean, you saw how different the finishing was for this race as it was for the the Sleet Street, which was much more mm-hmm. um, open to fast marbles, um, even with the, the the ice feature. So I I do say that there is um, I as a starting course, it's a five out of ten. As a middle of the 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 season course, it would be like a seven or an eight for me. Um, like, maybe I should rethink my number, like. Cause like, I'm feeling middle of the road. Five isn't a bad number. I got. I, I, I'm still stuck sometimes. Like I, I've said this before. Like how I don't think that like some of the lower numbers are as bad as they say. But I'm still the like, trained by like by society of how they always use those lower numbers. Is like or like how school like you, you have to be seventy percent to be good or nothing else. Yeah, basically. Which is I true, like. Man. Maybe maybe five or six would be actually be a more accurate number. Like it's it's a good race. Like, it doesn't. Part of it doesn't. I wonder. One of me wonders if it's not standing out to me. If I'm just, I'm just not as 
into it. Like, I've just been, like, I'm not, like, hmm. Like, I mean, it is cool seeing the turtle sliders. Like, that was a very interesting race up there. I, re I rewatched everything just to, before this episode to kind of refresh myself. And, like, it is a nice race. But it's, like, it doesn't, I don't know. I get, I guess, I guess five. A five is probably a, a more honest and fair number. Yeah. I, I mean, that's what I went with, so I couldn't agree more, I guess. But, uh, I don't know. It, the race was fine. The Arrangers won. I'm glad that they're winning. I'm glad to see the Turtle Sliders do something that we didn't expect. It was cool, but it was just not... It didn't catch me in the way that other races might, like the next one. It kind of just was like, okay. Also, we haven't seen Marbula 1 in a while, and there's 20 teams out there on the track. There's 20 oh, teams. Oh, yeah, we didn't talk about that. All right? there's and, and that's a lot of teams, and it just gets blurry with all the names and the teams out there. Yeah. And, like, because I didn't invest in fantasy this season, there's a lack of... Um, like focusing on the teams that are not at the top mm -hmm. because it's like, well, I mean, I didn't vote for any teams. Fantasy always helps me being more involved because then I really focus on certain teams. But I mean, you know, I still can, but I'm more focused on the lead and, and then how the race actually develops in the story of the race. And this one didn't right. have a huge story besides, of course, oh, wow, the turtle sl sliders are actually doing good, even though they usually aren't. So um, that's kind of how I felt. Um and I didn't think yeah. the yeah the sharp corners didn't they did they they did what they were supposed to do but nothing too crazy. Uh, do the balls of chaos normally do good at Marbula One racing? Yeah, no, yeah, they're they're usually in the top half. They're they're a strong team for racing. I would say that they yeah. always are in the have the chance to uh, be a podium team, but they just again it's just inconsistency for them. I mean, they made the podium at their own home track, so hey, host curse still isn't real. Enough with the host curse. No, everyone knows. It's I know. Real. By even saying that, we're reopening that that argument. I know, but someone always. I'll, I won't bring it up again unless someone else brings it up. But like that's. I just remember. I think one of our more recent episodes, someone mentioned it again. It's like, what are you talking about? The host curse. Oh, it's probably. I was listening to let um let it roll. I think someone brought up on that podcast one time. It was like recent. It's like really still. You people are still going on. Are they about still this? like arguing for that? I don't understand. Like I don't. There's. I don't know. The like logic literally says no to that. Like and like I. Th that's the. That's what I, the only thing that bothered me about Greg Woods. Every once in a while he'll mention the the, the host curse. I'm like, come on, Greg. Like I understand you want to add to the drama, but like at least be truthful with it, right? Um. Yeah. There's not even data to back that up. Where's the data to back that up? I I still can't find it. Besides the the oceanics, that's the only thing that backs it up. But to have something that's cursed and needs to be consistent, actually, cursed by definition means every single time this thing happens a different way than it was supposed to happen. Because the word curse means means like consistently turning something that's normal or just expected or usually good and making it shitty consistently, not just every once in a while. You know, that's not how the word curse works. It just doesn't work like that. So, right, I mean, right. I mean, definition wise, come on, like, let's just let's be let's be based in our in our assessment there. So, I mean, especially when you talk about other podcasts talking about it, because like, that's where the truth really should be. I mean, I, I get it for commentary. You sometimes want to be over dramatic. I'll do that sometimes um, my commentary. But, you know, come on. But um, yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, like I, I, something else that I've noticed about like I feel like this is this might be a bit of an obvious thing to say, but like because I'm such a big Momo fan, I often find myself trying to find them in the crowd and not pay attention to what's actually happening at the front. So uh, usually in my first viewing, sometimes I end up actually not appreciating the race as much as I can because I'm trying to find my favorite team. But once I but like on my second viewing, I paid more attention to what was actually going on the front. I think I had more fun the second time. Yeah, yeah, it's easier to follow. Yeah, because you know what kind of what's happening. You can really uh, seek out the details. Um, I mean, I, I think there's no time. Uh, I guess it's just as good a time as any to really move on to the next uh, course here. So, I yeah. mean, uh, let's do that. Let's talk about let's talk about the second race. First race again, nothing crazy. It's just the races get more and more interesting as the season goes on because then we have that backstory to work with. Oh wow, this mm -hmm. marble was here at the earlier on. Oh, this team was here and now they're here and and like oh, how are they progressing? What what rivalries are coming out. So um, right now, we're just kind of building that. But I will say 
that uh, the second race was really fun one to watch for various reasons. So, um, first of all, stop with the thirty over thirty second intro. It's over thirty seconds. It's thirty five. The intro for every video to Marvel One. Stop doing that. I don't care. I don't need to see every single team is competing at, at, at every time I watch, especially by like race ten. I don't need to see that. Um, it's pretty. It's actually pretty annoying to me, but. Um, I don't know why they insist on that every time they start Marvel One. Like it's people love the people love the intro. Like like intros like get you into the mood for what you're going to see. Like, yeah, show, but like, so. keep them. You're supposed to keep them short. You know what I'm saying? Like 20, 15 seconds. They could they could have made a shorter version that kind of showed all the teams, but quicker to for like the the um the videos after the first one. You know, because it's like. You watch that whole intro, and you see every team. And then by race eight, you're like, okay, here we go. Every team, yep, Shining Swarm. Okay, Chocolate Tears, right? Yep, Turtle Sliders, all the logos, and then I, they're all showing up in the same way. All right. I don't know. I think this is what my opinion, though. <sighs> race two off. You start us off. Thoughts, rating, go ahead. Uh, All right. I'm responding to Alex in the chat. Uh, Don't worry about him. If you respond, respond out loud. Yeah, well, whatever. I, I was just saying, like, like he's like saying, like he loves how Wolf is a fan of Momo just because their color, like, like it has a big relationship. And while well, I started liking him because their color, I all, I fell in love with him because of their story and history, like that tw- that close win into or that that very close round in the final event of 2016. Their injury. They have the most story in 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 universe. That like outside like. They didn't even need supplementary material to actually have an interesting narrative to them. So, like, that's a big part of it. I actually think... Um, Sorry, just to cut in. I actually think a a fun idea for the intro, um, because it would set the stage for a lot of people mentally for the race, is an intro that that showed a couple highlights or just, like, showed, like, a few of the teams and a shorter intro, but a few of the teams that were going to be important to this race. Like, for example, after the first race where you show all the teams, then you have, like, a 10-second intro that for the second race would show the Crazy Cat Size and the Hazers and the and the other two teams that were up there and maybe a little highlight or something. Because then it's like, you know, you're setting the tone for the race specifically, not just for Marbula 1, which I think would be really cool. But then that kind of delves into spoiler ter- territory. Like, okay, these teams are ones who are going to be winning it. So I don't need really, I don't, shouldn't even be excited for my team if they're not on that list. I guess that's fair, though. I think it's always cool to, like, point out where your attention should be. Because it's always good to know where to look, especially when there's 20 marbles on the field. I would say that idea works for like the final races when it's down to a set number of teams for the po- the final podium position, like for the the the, the title, like like who's gonna win between like the crazy cat size, the hazers, and Team Momo or something, like 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 really emphasize them and their big moments. Like that, Momo that in that, like that would ever happen, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right? Sorry, even I know that's crazy. Yeah. So anyway, anyway, Wolf, uh, race two then. Go ahead. Oh, thanks for calling me Woof, by the way, and so Woff. Uh, I, I would s- Woff. <laughs> Sleet Street. Um, aesthetically, like I, I get the, the backtrack is the same, but I feel like it fits it still. There's more, like, like there's probably primarily one ice section, but like there is some more on the siding and underneath the support. So like, it's decent in terms of its appearance. I feel like maybe they could do a little bit more. Maybe you can just spray paint the tr- like certain tracks white. Like I don't know. Like, like, I don't like know just, why they like, can't do that. I sorry, I'm gonna cut in on you because I just it, it, that is like something you know I've talked about a ton. Why can't you go with just a little bit extra mile with the theming? How hard is it to make more things look white when you have an ice related course? You don't have to do the whole thing where you put all little toboggans on the side right. and whatever. But like, come on! I mean, just a little bit more effort. The as bank far section as... would be perfect, like a bobsled yeah. bank. Yes, yes, exactly. D- like, just oh man, blows my mind that why that can't be. Um, I literally just thought of that now, and like that, like that's what I love about this show. Sometimes, like, like it's only until like we're together talking about this stuff that sometimes the ideas flow, and it's like, oh my gosh, these things could be a lot better. Uh, my opinion is now just, and we're gonna talk about this, but like the, like that the 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 big bank into that swerving section, like the, it's not nearly as sharp. But honestly, I don't think the only time a marble managed to make it through that swivel section well, I think was when there was another marble to bounce off of. Like, it take, it killed so much momentum. And on the one hand, that allowed for a very close race, which was fun and exciting in that in that regard. 
but it also then resulted in that massive gap between first and second to the point where six marbles got lapped and it's like is that should i be excited about that or is that like just a sign of really bad track design <laughs> like oh, well, how do you go about that here's the thing here's the thing well do you want to give a rating on this first or do you want to do you want to wait on that um um right now i think i'm feeling like i am feeling a oh wait, wait oh I can't, I can't, how can I forget? The camera work at the beginning, especially, was terrible. Like, you couldn't see anything going on in the front. Like, like Greg is talking no, about all these would, things. Like, it was like, well, what's going it. on? Wop, we can't wop see just them. Disconnected. What is happening? Okay. Well, uh, like, it started out so, not here so anymore. bad. I think it got, oh, it got it a little bit better as the, the race went on, but, like, it was still. How did you disconnect from Discord? Wait. You just I, disconnected did I just, for did a second. That was hilarious. Oh, that was me? I didn't know. Oh, well. Um, hello, we're back here again. Uh, continue. <laughs> make sure continue, you're still recording I guess, and everything. Yeah, oh yeah, I'll make, you make sure I am. Yeah, As I'm we recording. watch the pinball here in the, uh, the, the ice section. Yeah, oh, um. Oh, look at the red eye. Uh, how do I want to, how do I want to rate this? Like, I don't know, how do you? The actual racing itself was fun and engaging and exciting, and it was between teams, so, like, I mean, sure, they're both on my fantasy, but, like, it's, even just they weren't. Like, it's just exciting to see uh, such an intense back right. and forth. We don't see that often. But but we couldn't see very well at the, at the beginning. A lot of it wasn't necessarily due to their skill so much as it was just to, like, the track. That's part of the track being really bad, and it affected them significantly at the end to where there was no longer a contest for, like, the last five or six laps. <sighs> hmm. I don't know. I, I think it's... Is it better than the last? I don't know. I, like, the last race doesn't have nearly as many negatives to it, but the positives of this race, I feel, are higher than the positives of the last one. It's so hard to say. Five? Maybe six? Honestly, like, it, like, like they balance it. Like, the positive and negatives are so extreme on both ends that it kind of just balances it out. Okay. I mean, I will take a six then, I'm assuming. I don't, I don't know. Like, you seem very, very uh, indecisive. Yeah, like it's 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 such a weird one. Like, <sighs> hmm. like I I remember when I first ended the video, I was like, oh, this is great. But then I really, really thought about it. I was like, oh yeah, there's some problems here, and I saw some of the complaints in the community. Is like, yeah, these are some problems here. And it's like, I don't know, man. It's it's just really it's it's just such a mixed bag. It has those great highs, but also some pretty bad lows too. You have mentioned that. <laughs> I know I'm just, I know I'm repeating myself but what do you what do you want from me <laughs> Who am I to say anything about that right Um All right well I mean I'm I'm going to let you be indecisive for now then and I'll talk then All right Um do I like this race Yes yes I actually really enjoyed this race Um do I give this a 7 8 out of 10 Yes I do give it an 8 out of 10 I give it an 8 out of 10 Um I like the race I honestly it's hard for me to complain because I always have been asking and imploring JMR to be very deliberate about adding track features that really mm -hmm. make a race unique. So they had the banked hairpin plus the ice section. So I have to appreciate that. I really do have to appreciate that. Would I have liked if they had like themed it a little bit more towards winter? Would I have liked if they had a section that had actual ice on it? I mean, I know that seems crazy, but it really isn't that hard. I mean, just put ice, just put an ice as a part of the track somewhere, and then just, you can keep it cold. And for the racing period, it wouldn't be that hard, honestly. Like, I mean, like, I you would have to get some extra equipment, but we're talking about a, a million subscriber YouTube channel. I think you can buy a little extra equipment for the one job you spend all your time doing, right? I mean, I, I'm just saying, like, I would have liked to see stuff like that that really took it to, like, whoa, there's they're actually on actual ice. There's this whole section that's steamed like ice, but then there's this other section that they're racing on actual ice. Like, th those kind of things always would appeal to me. Um... Because I like things to really feel like where they're supposed to be from. If the Gliding Glaciers actually made a legitimate Marbula 1 track, they would actually have probably sections where you're racing through lots of ice. I think the right. Gliding Glaciers would also have a section like we see here that is like a, that has the slalom feel to it. 
Um, mm-hmm. I think that JMR uh, tried to force it a little bit because honestly, that section would, would work a lot better just as is, but just a little bit wider. But then again, I don't really know if, if it's that easy for them to just make it a little wider, but it would make a difference because a little wider right. would allow for a little bit better lines through uh, and space out. Um, but that, I can't hate the track. the track. Yeah. So yeah. I was just going to say that piece of the track was probably not custom made. They probably, they probably just like bought that as is. No, but it looks like they kind of they use glass and then foam. They actually might have custom made that. I just don't think well, they thought it's not, it it's not the same as the 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 uh, M one track. Obviously, like the the uh, the what was it? What's the track called again? Like the it's from like Corsetti or something like Corsetti. The, 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 the Marble Drum, Marble Drum track. That's I, right. How could you forget? I don't know, but like maybe they could. Like I don't think they actually custom made that plastic piece. They might have actually just bought it somewhere. But maybe like. Making it wider, it would the slums would have a they would, they would it'd be a fine line. Like they need to be wider because it just it's too drastic of a turn into a cu- into a cup there. So it's like, it's like bam, I'm stopped. I don't know what to do. But like it, if it's too wide, then they almost do nothing. Kind of like how a lot of the bumps in the O Raceway almost do nothing in that sand section. Like it just it's just almost it's almost just a formality. It's hard to really hate the track piece though because they're. <sighs> Okay, so it's the racing, pleasing. racing Marble League has a similar thing. I don't know. I don't know. Like I, for some reason, in the Racing Marble League, though, it, it it ends up occurring a lot differently. But they have a similar type thing where they'll have like a slalomy part like that or a chicane part like that, where some marbles will be fast because they can take the because they get right through the middle of it and take that fast line, and some marbles get caught up and they slow down and take the slow line. But for some reason, it doesn't affect the race as much. It affects it the right amount. And that's, that's that could be related to two things that I think JMR didn't account for. Number one, the length of your difficult section has to be always taken into account. I think if you cut in half the length of this section here, then you give marbles a, le- a lot less time, like more time to build back up speed and everything, and um, a lot less time to stall. So maybe they should have just made the length smaller and added a couple more of these sections in other places. Places, but also the track that comes after the section that uh, the difficult mm-hmm. section is very important. If you if you um, the track pieces after this ice section were very very straight and fast, so you kind of. Mm-hmm marbles who get out of the slow section get to go right into something high speed, which really puts distance between them and the marbles still stuck in the slow section. It's almost better to right. come out of that section with a lot of turns or something also not very, um, you kind of ease back into something fast and straight because then that allows, you know, marbles to kind of, uh, get out of the really tough section and start to catch up and keep them, keep them close. That's why we, this was like the first time JMR had a, a lapping situation, because they, they, they went from slow and stalling to immediate back to a ton of speed with not many places for error. So marbles who, who, who thread the needle on the ice section would come out and not really have a chance to make any other errors right after that might slow them down for a second and let other marbles catch up. This is race track design that's very important because you don't mm-hmm. want lapping if you, can, if you can manage it out here in the JMR course. And you want... To keep races close. Did it work out for Smoggy and Red Eye? Yes, because they're both very good racers. So it ended up being fast. They ended up changing places a lot. And the luck would have it. It worked out. But we had lapping because of slower marbles. We had um, situations where like third place couldn't even see second and first. They couldn't even see it. <laughs> and and marbles were really pinballing and coming to a dead stop there in the, in the one section. So it, it was kind of like... But I, I do like the deliberateness of making a feature actually affect the racing in a Fair. way which was which was for me an eight out of ten also i mean you can't that that duel at the front between smoggy and red eye how could you possibly knock it it was great another way they could have maybe had it work better is like if the i that that ice section the acrylic whatever as, as ej mentioned like maybe like if it was immediately connected to like the big banked turn or even just a turn in general so, that, so they were actually in a curving motion already to then continue that momentum into the the curves might let allow them to snake Fair. through more quickly, and all, but, but they could still mess them up because if they hit a, a, one of the curves too, if they miss the the the, the transition between it too much, then they will lose momentum. But it, it rewards them for having consistency and result in less of that happening. Yeah, yeah, I think that's I think that's fair. Um, 
I don't know. And then again, that would just be testing, though. You'd have to test that out. You'd have to run a race with that change and see. And honestly, it doesn't take it take 10 minutes to run a race. It takes five minutes to really get what you want data wise from a race. I don't know why they don't test that out and be like, oh, I'll just move this back a little bit. I know it takes a while to set up these courses, but it doesn't Mm -hmm. take that long to just move a tracks around a little bit. It just doesn't. I know it doesn't. And especially when you be doing it this long. It just, there's no way. There's just, I'm looking at the screen. There's just not enough items holding up the track pieces that it would take hours to make the one change. And so we got to just go with what we did first because it would just take hours to switch around these legs on the track. No, it wouldn't. There's just no way. So, I mean, I know there's a lot of other stuff that goes into it that takes forever. I'm just saying, like, take 10 minutes to run a couple tests Put it in the best place. See what the best angles would be. And that makes a difference. That will make a difference. That will change how the podcast people or the other people who write articles or whatever react to the track. I'm just saying. I'm just putting it out there. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, with that being said, um, I I do think I did enjoy the race. And honestly, that battle between Red Eye and Smoggy was wonderful. That was the first time we've ever really got to see a duel like that. Um, Yeah in uh in a marbula one race just back and forth every other lap a different leader and that ice section really provided the 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 kind of the um the like every lap there was something that like okay here's gonna be here's gonna be a little uh uh challenge for them that's gonna that's really gonna bring it together it's gonna not keep it from the marble spacing out too much because some someone's gonna struggle there in this in the ice section someone's gonna get Mm -hmm. stopped up and so it's going to be, it's going to keep it close. It kept it close. So, um, I don't know. I, I got to say it was one of my favorite races to watch. Um, and, and unfortunately the ending was anticlimactic because there was the lapped marbles and it's too much space. I mean, like, come on, we're talking 10 seconds between second and first, which does show that the track was not perfectly designed because that should never happen. There should never be a 10 second difference between second and first. There should never really be lapped marbles in JMR. The only lap marbles you'll see on like Racing Marble League are because there he does open tryouts, so anyone can submit any marble. So there's some marbles that are just not even shaped correctly, and they're not going to be fast, but they still get to be in the tryouts. If that is the reason marbles are lapped, JMR, who's had all these teams compete forever, should never have this problem. I so I don't. There is those things to point out, but it was still a fun one to watch. I just realized Wolfcam got reset when I I briefly disconnected there. Uh, I, I, I turned turn it back. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, and that's that's fair. Yeah. Like, I enjoyed it, but I also can't deny the problems with it. So it's hard for me to give it too high. But I'll give it a more of a six than a five. How about that? All right. Now I'll, I'll throw it the eight just because they gave it a good shot. And we'll read a couple emails and get out of here. Um, again, this right. is uh, marbles, uh, MSW podcast at gmail.com. That's the email. You guys know it. We got a couple emails to read, and then we're going to get you guys out of here. Please email in. This is the time to. We're in a very important tournament of the season. Um, so this is a very important season for Marble Sports right now. So uh, definitely write in with your opinions. Yeah. Um, here we go. Edu writes in. He goes, M1 GPs and RML. Oh, good. We get to hear about some RML there. All right. Here we go. Edu says, racing is great. Racing is intense. Tumult Turnpike delivered. Great action on track. Big battle for second. Nice surprises. Turtle Sliders doing good there. Sleet Street was also interesting to watch. With Smoggy finding the consistency that no one else did. That's true. To win uh, Mm -hmm. with authority. However, I have a few opinions on M1 so far. Awesome to see the fan hyped in a way we didn't see for five long months since ML 2021 was over. Also nice to see JMR working to add a plus to every track. Um, I guess by that meaning an extended feature. Um, I guess. What, did, what, what a tumult turnpike. I guess the, the big bank turn on tumult. That's right. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, we, we, that was the first place I think that uh, showed up actually in the past. Well, it wasn't. It was the minty. It was the minty maniacs that had it first actually. Oh, it wasn't. It wasn't. Mm-hmm. Good trivia there. Um, the cameras were not good. Poor film choices, cutting away from the most intense action and missing interesting moments. Yeah, I think it did miss a few. Um, I actually didn't even realize of the duel between Smoggy and Hazy, which, by the way, truthfully started in lap one. I didn't realize it to about lap eight. Smoggy and Hazy. Smoggy and uh, Red Eye, sorry. I don't know why I said Hazy. <laughs> I don't know. But that I didn't notice it to about lap eight or lap six, and it started in lap one. It started very clearly in lap one when you do a rewatch. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
Um, GP2 track has a bad layout, too many momentum killer areas in track. That's fair. These being the... Yeah, it was too, like, either momentum... Um, momentum assisting or momentum killing it wasn't very in between in some places these being the bank banking exit barrier the slalom that didn't really work like a slalom fair and the ramp before the long straight as a consequence the laps don't flow well rml season three is shaping up to be a highly competitive series with more competitors providing proving to be fast racers crimson lady will have tougher than ever challenge this year excited to see how it will go uh, I agree about RML. Right. I am so excited. I want to see RM, uh, Crimson Lady win it again. That would be so freaking funny. I wouldn't even be able to handle it as a commentator. I want to be commentating uh, when that happens. I just want to be doing it. I just want to be there and then and 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 like watching the video and just freaking out because just Crimson Lady won't lose. I I I, I wouldn't be able to handle it. It'd be, it'd be great. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think your email was uh, was very uh, aligned with what we said in today's episode. All right, Alex yeah. has a bunch of things to say. Oh, anything you wanted to respond to? Um, mm, there's no, nothing particularly interesting. other like, RML, I guess. Like, yeah, I'm also excited. Like, some of them, these competitors have been quite impressive. Some of them have also been the opposite of impressive. <laughs> yeah, you know, some of them like <laughs> zigzag zap. <laughs> uh, are you enjoying my commentary, Waff? I am. It's nice. I'm getting better I, and better cool. every year. I really am. I do. You, 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 wow. What? What? Uh, my brain just went wrong directions. You are doing better. Like I can tell. Like, geez, my. I'm sorry. <laughs> dude. Yeah, dude. I um, uh, it's just so fun, man. And like um, it's just it's been. I can't believe like I'm in season three with this channel and just going strong with it. Like it's just so it's just so cool. Um. I it's one of my that's one of my favorite the highlights of my week when I sit down to do uh, some Marvel race commentary. Uh, I really try to be more and more like Greg, Greg every time there. Um, so yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, Alex writes in he, with the subject Coconut Mall. Alex says yo 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 yo. What up? Marbles are cool. I have a new favorite team. Every couple of months I get back into marble racing. It's funny because I almost gave them away and and happy I didn't. I was up till 2 a.m. yesterday doing my own marble tournament lol. Oceanics won. Well, <laughs> uh, fake. Uh, my favorite teams, Green Ducks. I picked them because I liked birds and then they almost won. Mini Maniacs with an extra X. Cool. I like mint ice cream. Team Primary. I don't remember, but I liked them since and stayed loyal. New fave, the Strixes. I love the Strixes. Good for you. I, I'm a big fan of the Strixes. Oh yeah, according to uh, according to Waff, this is the start of season five live chat because every twenty five. Well, this is the episodes, end of season. Oh, five. end of season five. This is the season five finale, whatever yeah. you want to call it. All right, I like how they look and they have my channel colors and remind me of cookies. They do remind me of cookies. Do you like FNAF? I do. I watched all the FNAF game theory, all of the FNAF game theory videos. So I'm a big FNAF guy for that. I don't actually play the game. Will you bring up overrated, underrated? Um. If people send me overrated underrated, I will do that. I I like overrated throwback. under. I forget what I said. Waff also left the Discord again by accident. There he goes. He's back. Oh, um, help. I forget what I did for that. I know that I want it back though. I wish we could bring it back as like a segment, but I need people to kind of like that's that works when people write in what they think is overrated and underrated because then we respond to it that's a good thing to email in at mswpodcast at gmail.com overrated underrated um anything i'm marble related or not i just we want to relate with you guys for part of the show do you remember lead cookie yes i do yes. remember lead yes. cookie that one I video that i did channel. that that was wonderful i actually let's look up and see if lead cookie is still a thing so funny i lead loved it cookie um sorry I, lead cookie youtube uh 378 subscribers marble rally is this which is the one i did i did uh, i believe i did one of these right uh, uh that was the finale did you do all i i oh commentary i thought we yeah. no, i thought we didn't I thought we didn't do that. I thought we just we were paid to talk about it, and it, but it was oh. a fun. It was a sponsorship. Oh yeah, I didn't do commentary. They talked about it. I, we talked about it on the show, and they paid us to do a little podcast about it. Casey's oh. on that episode too. Yeah, that was wonderful. 
I love that episode. It's so they, fun. I love how they do this Marvel race thing. I should reach out to them and say I'll comment if they do another one. That'd be just so fun. I don't I mean, know. But how... part of it was like the ridiculous factor of the guy's voice. I don't know if you would fit like you would make it too serious. I think theirs was meant to be ridiculous, and I, can I make it it's ridiculous. Just... Come on, Walt. Um, no, yeah, that's true. The guy who actually did it is really good. But I um... Green Tractor. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'd like to try to make something ridiculous like that. I always approach Marble Sports seriously when I do podcasting and commenting because my goal is to make people pretend or at least want to believe and then truly believe that this is a real sport. I mean, that's my goal. So I want to always approach it like I like commentators would a regular sport because I want the thing to be, oh, this is a real sport at some point. But it'll be fun to kind of be silly and just like be like, oh my god. I'm starting to integrate that because I'm getting so comfortable doing commentary. At least in races and fun. If you watch the last, he left Discord again. If you watch the last couple of videos on races and fun, I've started to integrate a more semblance of silliness into the commentary. Like just kind of being like things will happen and I'll just like make like some dry jokes about it because like super silly things happen. So I'm trying to do that because I think it's kind of funny, but. Um, it's slow go because it, it's, it's, it's hard to integrate new things when, um, until you're comfortable with the, the current things. So, um, anyway, rest of the email, uh, what does ricochet mean? <laughs> I'm not doing it just because you asked me to do it in the email. I'm not going to do the ricochet joke because you asked, I'll do it when I do, when I feel it. You can't force it. I feel like you've done it. it though. With someone asked you in a rich, in, in, or, again, again, rich in an email well. before. And Opinion you rant. JMR should stop introducing you. new teams. I think it was best when they had like 20. Now half the teams won't make it in. I cannot think of a solution though. Okay, peace. Kuh. Well, the solution would be have a bunch of them retire and make way for new ones. But honestly, most people like the old team. So I honestly don't know why. I don't know. I, I think they're, I think we need to chill with teams for a while on JMR. And ma- unless you want a good set of new ones for some reason, and then you're going to retire a bunch of the old ones. I'm fine with that, but that's a discussion. I keep dropping when I'm saying things. Dang it. I was trying to say, like, I'm pretty sure someone has emailed you about Ricochet in the past, and you, sa- and you said it d- just because they asked you to. No, almost. but, like, not this time. I want to say it because I'm not going to say I don't feel in the mood right now for the Ricochet. Uh, but I'll, in character come. development? Um and Waff we'll just let's discord again. This is the theme now. This is like every Are time every time we come around the course and hit the ice section again, Waff we'll, we'll leaves the uh discord. Okay. More random Actually, thoughts we'll from have. Alex. He read he did another email for some reason. He says, I think the CCE's coach should be crazy eye and the Savage Speeders coach should be savagely. Thank you for the thoughts. JMR will not be around forever. I think when and if they go away, they will make a final race that incorporates every event. It could be literal hours long. I can tell you for sure that that's not how they would um, do their final thing because that would yeah. take them too long. But um, I don't know. That's a good point. I don't know if they'll be around forever. They would end with Marble League. Either either Marble League or, for poeticness, Sam Marble, Marble Rally. Rally. Yeah. Poetic justice. It could start with a balancing act. The further you go, the better off you are. If you go to the end, you get a shortcut that maybe into the half pipe with funnels, maybe down a five meter sprint track with little blocks from the Hubelino maze. You get the idea. What would you guys like for a final marble race? I get it could be depressing, so I don't mind if you gloss over this. That's a fun question to end on um, for today because we're already we have a longer episode already. Yeah. Final marble race. If JMR had to do a fine, if they said to us, let's rephrase the question so I like it more. Um, <laughs> if JMR said, okay, we're making one more video, this one video will have one race and we'll let you decide what, or what event. how that race will be because you are such an amazing podcaster who's just knows so much about marbles. We're going to give that opportunity to you or to Waf, whoever responds first. Um, <laughs> so we're going to give you guys that ability to choose how that rat last race is run. What would we want? Well, race or event, like, could it be either or? No, I think it would be race. Obviously, for Marble's sake, it wouldn't be, like, balancing. Like, it would be a race. Hmm. Okay, well, the tradition has always been to end with a sand race, in Mar- usually in, Mar- in Marble League. Not always, but most of the time. So, I mean, that would be, a, like, the be- the biggest, longest, and most intricately designed sand race they've ever done. That would be kind of a cool way to end things. That would be cool. Remember, this is their last thing ever. So I would I would hmm. say this I would say something like I would want to see something I would you know how like 
I'm sorry, going back to the Mario Kart soundtrack reference here because that's been on the mind lately. But you know, if you listen to the Mario Kart soundtrack, if you listen to the staff credits, say, for Mario Kart 8, you'll notice that Mario Kart 8 staff credits integrates a lot of the songs from the courses, from the main courses, into the um, into the into the actual credits just like kind of works them all in there uh, over the course of the four minute credits like um i mean i could name a bunch of them but for people who don't know mario kart doesn't mean anything to you but it's true they do that so that's how i would want to see the final race i would want to see it integrate lots of little and I, i'd want attention to detail like you've never seen i want i would i would want to it to be where I'd have to rewatch the video 10 times to maybe catch all the little Easter eggs. But I want a busy race around the track itself. Um, I think mm. it needs to end with Sand Marble Rally, so I'd want them to go... I'd want them to have multiple different terrains, though, like take everything outside, build a track that's like 5 to 10 minutes, and it starts on like the Marble Drome or other stuff, and, they, and then ends, like it drops down into the dunes. Like They have the space up there to kind of make it all do that. And we're just finally talking. See, like, like we could finally see the version of the triathlon that they wanted to do the first time, where it actually goes into really like actual moving waters or something. Yeah, yeah, that that. But like, just like take it to the max. I'm talking like references on the side to every event, references on the side to every team, references on the side of the course to everything that's been a part of JMR. Maybe just like logos of things, just everything, just everything that you could possibly fit onto the screen because it's the last one and we want it to really be memorable i want to be able to watch that video and analyze and be like oh my god look there's the podcast logo oh my god look there's stint space you know oh my god look yes. there's there's mesp who cares about mesp i do for that for this I video do. so i mean like there i would want to see all that oh look there's the uh there's there's someone holding up a marble holding up the sign referencing the Rojo Rollers record from balancing blah 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 first they've won the first gold medal balancing first ever event like, just stuff like that Easter eggs over and over and over again and because and I'd want it to be so busy that like you're like wow this is really the whole universe of marbles gathering for this race um, I think it would be wonderful um, I would be sad because that would be the end of Marble Sports mm -hmm. but for JMR. But it would be cool. It would be cool to have that. I think for like 100th anniversary or 50th anniversary, if we ever get there, that's what I would want to see. Oh, I'll actually be – never mind. I'll be dead by then. Yeah, I'll we be... would all – I'm pretty sure we'd be dead. Oops. Uh, Alex, like, Oops. I, like, I don't know. Is Greg, Greg was just like eight, in his 80s. Greg is not in his 80s. I hope you're making a joke there. <laughs> yeah, Greg um... – who yeah, we we'll won't see. get – we won't get to 100. I think they need to do a 50. I need to do something for the 10 – but they need to do something for the 50 because most of the people who watch this now will still be alive for the 50, but we'll all be dead for the 100. Actually, the, yeah. yeah, I don't know what things will Yellow look like. Yellow Pie wouldn't be alive either. No, Yellow Pie is going to be long dead. Um, um, 2050. Who, like, what teams? He says, what teams would we going to have? Well, like, I feel like the ideal situation would be like it's like a, the end of a big tournament, so you're going to have a big narrative to end on too. But to do that well, you couldn't include every team ever because then that would be too cluttered. So, and I feel, like a finale, I feel like a finale should have every team, right? I but think the like finale, how I would see it, is I would, uh, um, I would probably do, like, I would probably do one big race that has every team. One marble from every team that's ever hmm. donned the screen. And then after that race, I would, uh, I would have an extra section there would be like extra sections that would open up like on, at the end of the track at the beginning or something like that, just to make it a little bit longer. And I would take one marble from each team that has ever won a tournament for JMR, not like San Marble Rally marbles because they're different size. Hmm. Maybe you could throw them in there. I don't care. Uh, but more Marble one and marble league one team. It's one. So Savage speeders, O Rangers, just the top, the ones that have actually gotten a victory and they would all race for the final what teams who have won before do have one more chance to win a game uh, win again savage beaters will likely win that race by the way um it's totally come on if that happens savage beaters will win that race we know that it would um, it would be poetic like they, would, they do they get the first for everything the first for everything and the and the last win last, possible right. i would it would be wonderful but uh yeah they that's how i want to see it end two races one with everybody one with uh the savage beaters um uh, all the winners who have ever won and then that's it. And it's just the video would take days to find all the Easter eggs because of how busy it is. 
but they mm-hmm. would be like locatable because like I don't know. Hopefully, camera work would be good or whatever. I don't. Know. It'd be cool if the background and stuff too. Like, there's more overt references to Project Marble Earth, like that the makes things more canon and yeah, stuff. Yeah, like, like canon stuff. Their stories. Like fans and and different and different team marbles that aren't racing, just kind of representing the canon and everything. You could go yeah. nuts. I would. I would. Exp- I would hope for that. But again, again, if we see that, then it's a sad day. So we're hoping we never see that. Um. We're hope- I'm hoping to be dead before Marvel Sports is dead. Um, I'm hoping to be yeah. dead, period. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> the... No, I'm not. Okay. Anyway, but that's going to do it for the show. That's the podcast. It's been some time, so this episode goes a little long. What are you going to do? You're going to listen. That's yeah. what you're going to do. We will see you guys hopefully next week as Marvel Sports continues um, to to go. I personally think Marvel Sports will never stop because there's always someone who's going to want to do it. And mm-hmm. if, if JMR ever crashed, well, think about all the other channels that are going to be like, wow, that's an opportunity because now right. Marvel Sports fans are going to be settling for the next best thing, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't think Marvel Sports would ever die. Um, and I'm hoping the Racing Marble League there continues to grow. They've grown a ton. They're up, they're up above 3K subs now and counting. So excited for them. Um, yeah. But uh, um, I don't know. Marvel Sports is moving. It's rolling right now. It's wonderful. <laughs> uh, but that's going to do it. That's the podcast. Waff, we'll take us out, and we'll see you guys next time. All right. It's the season five finale. So, in as tradition, it's time for a Wolf Tune. This one is not did not require as much. Well, no, it did require some editing. But like musically, this is probably the most challenging cover I've ever done. I think you all are going to love it. I'm really proud of this one. So, without further ado, I've been waiting on this for weeks, actually I think over a month now, (laughs) here is my cover of Static P's Adventurer. Roll on, Marvel Sports fans! I'm an adventurer! Child, go forth, find your place, he said, in this world full of danger and pain. Have heart, take courage, and dare to be brave with a merchant or might be your fate. A hero is someone who fights while afraid, not knowing each step of the way. A hero is someone who gives from their heart, sacrificing in order to save. Somewhere there's a place for Near and quite far Where I'm sure to be wrong Somewhere in time I'll Know where I'm called But where am I meant to be right now? Will I fall? village has fallen to waste When I came from the fields T'was not but a blaze My memories of this place Like a flower in bloom At the foot of a grave And don't we all Have days like these And don't these things Make the stories real Somewhere there's a place both near and quite far Where I am sure to belong Somewhere in time I'll know where I'm called 
But where am I meant to be right now? Oh, will I find my way in this land I barely know? Is this food like a gift to unwrap and behold? I must Mystery world yet unseen. What lies before me? Stories, longing to be. Wonder what's out there waiting to teach me about me. Adventure calls me and yearns for me to be part of this world. To be part of this world as to change it forever. Because I touch this land with my own two hands Reshaped and will never be the same Because I was made, because I was made After the image of my own heart Unique to me alone I have made and become a part Of this world and what it holds Each gift I have, including my life Is a gift for one and all And though there is pain and strife I gladly heed my call Somewhere there's a place both near and quite far Where I am sure to belong Somewhere in time I'll know where I'm called But where am I meant to be right now? Will I find my way? Though I ask, I hear that way. Cause this heart, yet untold, is a gift to behold.